Hey everybody, this is Sean, AKA Glasshole. Today we're gonna do a little demo, make a firecracker mini rig. Right now I'm just getting some prep work done. Pinks for the gums later. The primary tube that I'm using is pomegranate over white. It's kind of cool the whole time that I'm making it because the pomegranate goes clear as you work it hot and then slowly turns back to red when it's cool. So this piece is gonna go from red to white to red to white the whole time that I'm working on it. Right now I'm just trying to get my bubble evened out, the wall thickness, just to make sure the whole piece is uniform. It takes a little bit. Pop a hole in the end, put a handle on it, and I'm gonna switch directions so that I can get the perfect size piece of glass to blow out into a round ball. Cut it to the size I want. I love this method on the V Marber because there's no waste. Every little piece of tubing is getting used. Get the whole thing evened out again, blown up. And on a lot of my mini rigs, I put a clear window on the back. So right now I'm gonna put a little tiny string around here as an accent. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna attach a chunk of clear so that when the whole thing is blown out, you'll have a beautiful window on the back to be able to actually see what you're smoking. Just making sure everything's even. Get that clear prep so both holes are exactly the same size when they go together. After the attachment, I'm going to pull off the amount of clear I want to use. And then I'll begin working both pieces of glass together so the whole thing is one uniform bubble. There's always a trick with this because the color is stiffer than the clear. The clear always wants to blow out first. You'll notice as I'm heating this piece that I'll constantly put a little more heat into the section that's got the white in it rather than into the clear. Now it's time to flip the axis so that that window is actually on the back of the piece. Prep it for a handle, heat up another tube, stick the two together. Just pull off my original handle. And clean up that end where I just pulled that off. By pulling this to a really fine tip when you actually disconnect, you'll keep the color from folding. So the whole thing actually looks uniform even where you have that pull off point. If it's big and it flops over on itself, you always kind of end up with a little scar right there in the middle. So 
So now I'm just trying to get the whole thing to blow out evenly. I need to shape this to be a cylinder. I'm gonna do that by using the blow hose and pinching it between my markers. It's just a slow process. There's nothing about this that you should try to do fast. The whole thing will deform if you do. Even as I'm doing this, the whole piece slightly starts to twist. But as long as you maintain an even heat, you can go back in on the marver and just twist the other direction. It'll take that twist right back out. And there's the twist, you can see it. So by spinning the other way right here, just pulled it back to center. So now that I've got a cylinder that I'm happy with, I'm gonna start by making the bottom of the piece, pressing it flat. And then once again, I'll pop a hole on the bottom and switch directions so that I can go back in and melt the top of this piece. You can see those colors in the red changing as I've heated it in different spots. I think that's so cool. A little time in the kiln to make sure it's all a happy temperature. Go in on the top. For the firecracker, I'm actually going to do the same shape as the bottom. Just flatten it out, give it that nice cylinder shape. There we go, all set, I'm happy with the shape. But for a firecracker, there's one thing missing. This thing needs a wick on it. So I'm gonna pop a little tiny hole in the top. It'll end up being the mouthpiece in the end. Now it's time to go back in the kiln, start getting some of the other pieces made. Here's the start to the wick. I'm starting with white. Just like before, kind of blowing it out, making sure everything's even. And I'm going to stripe some gray on here so that when I twist it, it has that twisted effect that a wick does. Using two different shades of gray, just to give it a little highlight in there. All right, melt everything in, get it nice and smooth, nice and even. If this isn't even, when I start to twist it, the whole thing will start to kink. So just take your time, get it all blown out nice. Doesn't matter what either end looks like, I'm only gonna end up using the middle section. So the blow tube is going to allow me to keep a little bit of pressure in it while I'm twisting it so that it doesn't collapse. We're just going to slowly work this, twisting and then twist a little more. Marver's helping me maintain a good shape or consistent shape the whole time I'm doing it. All right, now that I'm happy with it, I gotta pop a hole in the bottom and get ready to attach the two pieces together.
made a firecracker pendant a few years back for 4th of July. I've always wanted to revisit the idea, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity right before the 4th to be able to do it again, see what I could do with it these days. There we go, just getting that hole the right size to connect to the actual can. I'm just taking my time on this weld, making sure these two pieces are truly one piece of glass. I don't want that thing breaking off later. So melt it down, marver it, heat it, puff it back out a little bit, marver it, heat it. Just take your time, make sure all your connections are right. If even one of them is not right, the piece will let you know later on when it shatters. And there we go. It's got to sit in the kiln for a little bit before I actually start doing the sculpting on it. So I've got a little bit of time to get some other prep work done. This guy needs two hands. So we're going to start by making a hand. I've got a rod of jet black. And all I'm doing is just bundling up the whole thing so that I have a nice big blob that I can pull down into his arm. Gentle heating on the part I want to pull. Then I'll build up the mass for the actual palm of the hand, give it a little squish, cut in a little detail line. Now it's time for fingers. Same thing, just make all, sure all your seals are good. So typically when I'm doing a hand, I don't actually shape any of the fingers until they're on the piece. That way I can make sure that they have the right personality in them. For right now, I'm just gonna get a basic hand made and I'll go back in and push it around later. I love my butter knife. It's my favorite tool for sculpting glass. A little punchy on the finger. Pull that handle down so that you're center and tear off the back. All right, now we got one hand. Check for size. Looks good. While that warms back up, time to work on the face. So I find center on the piece because it has that window in the back. I don't want it to be crooked. And I just slowly start working in the glass. This process takes me quite a while to get it as crisp as I like to have my pieces. Just keep heating the inside of the mouth and with that reamer, I'm just touching up all the edges. It's pretty cool right now how the inside of the mouth is white. I may have to do that on purpose one of these days because that's all going to turn red once I put it back in the kiln. 
All right, time for some gums. While I was trying to figure out how to make these pieces, this is the part that would crack on me more than anything. These gums absolutely have to be melted in all the way, especially on the corners. And the color I'm using is Boro Sticks Blush, if anybody's wondering. It's super soft. So that way when you put it in on the gums, it's gonna melt in. You don't really have to worry about it. Other pinks and things that are stiffer, you have to spend a lot more time making sure that seal is really good. All right, so now I've added some white to it. I'm gonna go in and shape my teeth, cutting right to that gum line. After the teeth are in, I really try not to heat them much. Just a little bit to make sure they're, all, they're not sharp. I may push on them just a little bit with my butter knife. But from this point on, no more reheating them. All reheats, just put it back in the kiln. I'm just building up that white again. Just melt it all together and cut those teeth. So here we go with the butter knife. Started out pretty basic and I like personality in my pieces. So to give it all that personality, now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna yank on the lips, I'm gonna sculpt in the cheeks, I'm gonna give it a little chin. Just all those little details that add the personality. This is really my favorite part of making a piece. All right, so now it's just time for to make the other hand. I always pull out the original one and set it on the bench. That way I can make sure that the two hands are exactly the same size. All right, still got a little bit of time, so let's get a fitting made for this. Back to that chunk of red tubing, just trying to balance out the glass, especially on a fitting. Your wall thickness better be even or it's not gonna come out right. I'm just gonna eyeball this one to approximately a 10 mil fitting. Gently open up the end, making sure that when the hole up pops, that it pops evenly. It doesn't pop to one side or the other. And you can best achieve this by slowly thinning the glass on the end before actually blowing the hole. Make sure everything looks good. So now I'm just slowly heating this. You want a gentle heat. You don't want this thing screaming hot. You just want it able to move. Slip your fitting tool in until it's perfect fit. I always push a little bit past the top, that way we can give this thing a nice finished lip on it when I'm done. Here we go, I just went and flared it. Flatten it out. And just double checking that everything's nice and tight.
All right, quick second to make the down stem. Underneath my bench, I already have prepped punties, both rods and tubes, so I never have to think about it when I'm in the middle of a piece. I just reach down and grab one. All right, one last component. He needs a tongue. I'll just ball it up, press it flat, get that nice raindrop shape to it. All right. Stick the tongue, bend it over. off any excess this is another one of those attachments where you want to make sure that everything's just perfect so I like my little hand torch all right hand got the hand attached gonna make sure that it's sitting exactly where I want it to be Back to that butter knife again. All right, I'm happy with the first one. A little fire polish. All right, well that heats up before I put on the other one. I'm gonna put a couple little flames on the top of this wick. So what I've done is actually just mixed up about three different colors. I'm gonna stripe them onto clear, and then I'm gonna blend all of them together. That's gonna really water down the colors and give them a nice transparent look when I put them onto the piece. shape on this doesn't matter at all, so I just did a quick little pull down. Put that other arm on first. And here's those flames. So this is another color that over time, those colors will darken. The red will start to pop out. There's a yellow in there. Right now they kind of go on a little milky. All right, give it a little bend so your face isn't directly over the fitting. Adds a little more personality to it too. I just wanna say thank you everybody for watching me make this project. It was a fun one. Peace.